In this tutorial, I'm going to break down the hot chocolate bomb trend. How do you get the marshmallows inside the chocolate? Do you have to use expensive, high quality chocolate? How do you get it so shiny and how thick does it need to be? What are some fun ways to decorate the bombs? How do you get the most dramatic explosion? How can you gift wrap these? I'll be answering these questions and showing every step of how to make them in this tutorial. First, let's fly through the basic technique. Melt chocolate, spread it over a mold, pop it out, fill it with treats, stick two halves together, add some decorations, and then create an explosion. Now I'll go step by step in a lot more detail and then show you the drastically different results with different kinds of chocolate. The first step is to melt your chocolate, and how you do this is the most important part of the process. If you overheat the chocolate, it won't set properly, and you'll get patchy stains all over your hot chocolate bombs. And if that happens, I'll show you how to fix it later in this tutorial. Put the chocolate in a bowl and put the bowl in the microwave for 30 seconds at 80% power, and then stir the chocolate around to spread the heat and to melt it a bit more as it touches the warm bowl. Put it back in the microwave for another 30 seconds at 80% power, and then stir again. How many times you do this depends on how much chocolate you're using, how big the pieces are, and how hot your bowl gets in the microwave. But for me, a bar of chocolate took three sessions in the microwave. If you're using a bar of chocolate, you should break it or chop it into small pieces that are all around the same size, because it will melt quicker and more evenly than if you use large blocks of chocolate like this. As you stir, any lumps will melt a bit more, and once the chocolate is completely smooth, it's ready. The process for white chocolate is exactly the same. Melt the chocolate gently by using short intervals and 80% power in the microwave so you don't overheat the chocolate. You can even add sprinkles to the chocolate, but I'd recommend using these tiny nonpareils instead of larger sprinkles because the fun variations of shapes and sizes in a sprinkle mix, and any metallic colours, won't be noticeable once you've mixed them into the chocolate. You'll need a silicon mould, and I've put the link for the one I use in the video description. Spoon some chocolate into one of the holes and use the back of your spoon to push it up the sides of the mould, all the way up to the top, so you have a complete hemisphere. Make sure you don't see the mould through the chocolate in any places, because that means you'll have holes, or lighter coloured patches, on the chocolate on the outside of the bomb. A 4 ounce bar of chocolate, or 113 grams, is enough to make 3 bombs by filling the mould to make 6 halves. This is a semi-sweet chocolate, with 55% cocoa solids, and I'll explain more about that later, but the important thing about it at this point is that you only need to do one layer of chocolate, because even when it's melted, it's quite thick. You can see the difference between the consistency of the melted semi-sweet chocolate with 55% cocoa solids, compared to a really good quality chocolate with a high cocoa solids percentage of over 60%, like this 70% bar. With a higher percentage of cocoa solids, the melted chocolate will be very runny, so the coating will be thin, so I recommend doing one layer, then putting it in the fridge for about 10 minutes until it's set, and then adding another layer to make the chocolate slightly thicker. Pay special attention to the rim of the mould, around the top edges, because if it's too thin there, it will snap when you take it out of the mould or when you attach the two halves later. Use the same method to spread white chocolate into the moulds, with or without sprinkles mixed into the chocolate. If you're enjoying this tutorial, please tap the thumbs up button and subscribe to my YouTube channel for a new cake decorating tutorial every week. Put the moulds in the fridge for at least 10 minutes to set the chocolate, and then hold the mould on two opposite sides of a hemisphere, and gently peel back the mould from the chocolate with both thumbs, while pushing upwards on the bottom of the mould with your fingers. The chocolate should pop out easily. It's best to wear gloves while you do this, so you don't leave fingerprints on the chocolate. If you didn't overheat your chocolate, it should be beautifully shiny. Look at the difference between properly melted chocolate and overheated chocolate. I'll show you how to fix overheated chocolate later. Here's what the white chocolate bombs with and without sprinkles look like before attaching them together. Now we're going to fill the bombs and then attach the two halves together. To fill the bombs, place one half of chocolate facing upwards, like a bowl, and pour some hot chocolate into it. I use between one and two tablespoons of powder. Then sprinkle some marshmallows on top and add anything else you want in your hot chocolate, like brownie pieces or sprinkles. Make sure everything is within the edges of the chocolate so your next half will fit neatly on top. I made some little chocolate dinosaurs for fun, pouring melted chocolate into silicon dinosaur moulds and then adding those to the sprinkled white chocolate bombs. And although the idea was cute, they melted in the hot chocolate so you didn't notice the shapes in the end. I'll show you a more effective way to add chocolate shapes like these in a minute. 
Place a pan on the stove on high for a few seconds until the base warms up, and then take it off the heat and place the other half of your bomb in the pan so that the edge starts to melt. As soon as you see the melted chocolate around the base of the bomb, lift it up, otherwise you'll melt too much and you'll have a lopsided sphere. Press the melted edge down onto the other half, pushing gently to attach the edges together. Ta-da! Another way to do this, which I find trickier and messier, is to put some melted chocolate in a Ziploc bag, cut off a corner, and squeeze it out through that hole, piping it around the rim of one of the halves of the bomb, and then press the two halves together. You can try both methods to attach the bombs and choose which way you prefer. To disguise the seam between the two halves, you can add decorations. Start with a chocolate drizzle, putting some melted chocolate into a Ziploc bag and snipping a corner off to squeeze the chocolate through. Move your hand quickly back and forth over the bomb to drizzle the chocolate, and you can leave it like this, which looks simple and classy. Or add sprinkles. Or these cute little dinosaurs I showed you how to make for the filling in these bombs. Now for the exciting part, the explosion. Warm milk on the stove or in the microwave until little bubbles form around the edges, and it's hot but not boiling. If it's too hot, the bomb will melt immediately and there won't be a dramatic explosion of the marshmallows, and if it's too warm, the bomb won't melt and explode. Pour the hot milk over the chocolate bomb, and after a few seconds the chocolate will collapse and melt away and the marshmallows will bubble up dramatically to the surface. I like to use a paper straw placed into the mug to slowly lower the hot chocolate bomb into the mug, since it can be a bit tricky to lower it down into the mug with your fingers for these large bombs that are almost as wide as a mug. The straw is useful to stir the hot chocolate together too, to mix the hot chocolate powder and milk so you don't have a thick layer of chocolate sitting at the bottom of the mug. You can gift wrap these for a thoughtful, unique present, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment, but first, the burning question. Which chocolate should you use? Whenever I read that you need a good quality chocolate for a recipe, I roll my eyes and reach for a bag of chocolate chips. But for these hot chocolate bombs, there really is some truth to this as far as the shininess of the bomb. I tested three types of chocolate, semi-sweet chocolate chips, a semi-sweet bar with 55% cocoa solids, and a Ghirardelli 70% dark chocolate, and here are the results. The semi-sweet chocolate with 55% cocoa solids was super shiny and beautiful. I did notice that it melted quite quickly with any touch, especially if I tried to tidy up the join between the two halves of the bomb after attaching them together. The chocolate with 70% cocoa solids, which was the Ghirardelli brand, was the shiniest by just a little bit compared to the 55% chocolate, but it was the most stable as far as staying solid when I pressed the halves together or picked it up. Semi-sweet chocolate chips gave the least shiny result and were the most difficult to work with because even after setting, the chocolate melted as soon as I touched it, so I left fingerprints all over it. If you overheat your chocolate when you melt it at the beginning, you'll get these stains or splotches on the surface, or a dull finish instead of that nice shininess you saw on the chocolate that was melted properly. But don't panic, you can fix it. Break up the chocolate and put it back in the microwave at 80% power for 30 seconds at a time. Spread it back into the moulds, let it set, and you'll have nice shiny chocolate bombs. Okay, a few ideas for displaying or serving these, or wrapping them up to give us gifts. First, if you want to give someone the mould as a gift, so they can make their own chocolate bombs, I've made a how-to sheet you can print off and give them with the mould. It's on BritishGirlBakes.com and the link is in the video description. If you want to display or serve hot chocolate bombs on a plate or platter, cupcake wrappers hold them in place nicely and they're just the right size for these large bombs. They fit perfectly. For a gift, place a bomb in the middle of a square of cellophane and pull the corners up and tie them with a piece of string or ribbon. You can put the wrapped up bomb inside a pretty mug and give both as a gift. Add a spoon or paper straw for a nice touch. These are a fun gift to unwrap and even more fun to drink. I couldn't resist adding this little clip of my three-year-old enjoying his first ever hot chocolate bomb. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. For my free online course, go to BritishGirlBakes.com and you'll also find all of my recipes and tutorials there, and my online cake school with courses for every skill level on baking and cake decorating. Thanks for watching!